So today I'm going to share with you all about data from Morris Hill Elementary and my name is Erin Turner. So Morris Hill is a military school. We are on Fort Riley and we are also considered the transfer building. And so what that means is that uh, if parents work on post, they have the option to have their students come on post with them and attend our building instead of attending their home school. We have a, a service on post called School Age Services, and so parents can drop their children off as early as 5.30 in the morning there, and they can be bused to our school and only our school. We have approximately 195 students. <clears throat> we have three kindergarten classes. Uh, kindergarten last year was our largest set of children. We have one sheltered ELL classroom and two regular kindergarten classrooms. Every other grade level has two classes per grade level except for third and fifth last year, and they had one class apiece. In our building, 91% are highly qualified. The 9% that are not considered highly qualified, it could be a situation like myself next year, I will go from a classroom teacher to a library teacher, and because I have not finished my master's degree and gotten my endorsement, I will be teaching on a waiver. So that is what that 9% is. So in our building, we have about 55% of our student body is male and 45% is female. I can tell you in my classroom, it was an even split 50-50 both ways. Uh, our ethnicities are 41.9% white, 16.7% black, 24.6% Hispanic, and 16.7% other. We have a very diverse student body. I'm fairly certain that it's because of the military and because of our location. We have kids from everywhere. So as far as economics go, we have 54% of our student body is disadvantaged, which means that they are entitled to free or reduced lunch, which helps with our partial Title I label. And then 14.4% of our student body is considered ELL and get services due to being ELL. So how do we do business? Well, we do climate surveys and these climate surveys will rate our district and building. I'm sorry, the climate surveys are done both district level and building level, I apologize. And what it does is we can uh, rate our building, we can rate the, the climate in our building, we can re rate our administration, we can rate surveys and different things like that. We have quarterly data meetings. These quarterly data meetings take place between the principal, the classroom teacher, and the instructional coach. We have our data-driven assessment, which comes from our data meetings. We have our SIT team, which is our student improvement team, and this is made up of our principal, our instructional coach, our team leaders, our special ed teacher, the gifted teacher for the district is invited if need be, our school psych and our school counselor, and uh, teachers can bring students to this team that are in need of something, be it a gifted student that you've tried everything for and you need more help with, or even a high-functioning student that you just need a little help with a low functioning student, any student that you have just completely tried every tool in your bag of tricks and nothing is working and they will help you uh, to find other ideas to work with that student. We have mandatory MTSS daily. So this is our multi-tiered support systems of support and it's anything from one-on-one -on -one to a uh, small group. Uh, sometimes on computer, just based on whatever the data says that students may need. We do iStation, which is our reading program. Students practice regularly, and then once a month, they take what is called the ISIP, and that will level them as far as their reading instruction, and that helps us also determine how they're doing in reading and whether or not we need to adjust their MTSS time for any other possibility. We also use Freckle, which is formerly known as Front Row Ed. In our building, in our district, our vision statement is that USD 475, in partnership with parents in our community, is dedicated <clears throat> to the common goal of learning for all whatever it takes, to prepare our students for the demands of continuous learning in the competitive workplace. I do have to say that I know that in our building, we do a really good job, in my personal opinion, of looking beyond the academic. We also look at the social and emotional well-being of our kiddos. We talk to them. We do what we can to take care of them. Um, I can give an example of I have a student in my classroom who doesn't qualify for free or reduced lunch, but somehow there's never food in the house. And so I keep uh, snacks in the building in my classroom for him. And then uh, we do have an extra food basket donation that I keep in the classroom for him and if he needs it it's got a snack and some uh, little boxed milk and things like that 
and two weeks before school ended, the third grade teacher came to me and his sibling was in trouble. And so just from my experience with the brother, I spoke to the sibling and found out same thing. Sibling had been up late, sibling was very hungry, and so that is why he was being defiant and not listening and not doing what he needed to do. And so that, looking at his social and emotional and not just at his academic or his behavior helped tremendously. Where are we now? This part kind of excites me. Um, I am on what we call our pause team, <clears throat> which is our safe and civil schools uh, team. And so we've been working on attendance. And as you can see, uh, attendance, our building attendance uh, in 2016 jumped tremendously. We had a much better, we had a much better uh, participation and attendance in 2017. So the different things that we are working on are definitely working. And I'll go into that further on in my pre presentation. For our reading for grades three, four, and five, we did a phenomenal job. Uh, this is our level one, which is significantly below level, and level four is above level. So as you can see, our significantly below levels for reading in grades three, four, and five in 2016 was significantly below the district level and the state level of level ones. And our level three, which is on level, was significantly above. And the same thing uh, in 2017. We had some pretty decent scores. And then in 2000, for math, in 2016, again, you can see our level one significantly below level is much less than the state and the district level, uh, while our level three is significantly above the level of the district and the state. And again, in 2017, you can see that our kiddos significantly below level. Our numbers were well below the district and the state, and our on-grade level were well above the district and the state. This particular uh, system right here, this particular set of data is extremely, makes me extremely prideful. Um, I taught, I looped up with my fourth graders to fifth grade for the 16-17 school year. And so with the other fifth grade teacher teaching social studies, I taught science. And so these scores just blow me away that our below level was well below the state and district level, but our on grade level was well above the state and district level. So I take a little bit of a little bit of pride in that one because I worked really hard for that. Where do we want to be? So where do we want to be? Our building goals include re improving our attendance rate. This is not so much the absenteeism as it is the tardies. You know, we want we start our day, our bell rings at 7.55, and we start our day at exactly 8 o'clock. And so we want all bodies in the classroom by 8 o'clock. And so to help do that, we created something, our Safe and Civil Schools team created something called the Punctual Panther. And so for every day that everyone is in the classroom when they need to be, we have a chart and we get to fill out a block. And we do it in sections of 10. And for every 10, that that does not have to be consecutive but for every 10 days that are everybody is here on time they get a reward be it you know a couple of extra minutes of recess or maybe some free time on their tablet when they got to 50 the principal bought pizza and so i can tell you in my classroom my kids have 100 percent buy-in we ended the school year at 95 and we didn't start until later in the school year so i'm pretty proud of my kiddos uh, Inquiry-based learning for us, we have a partnership with K-State and uh, Dr. McCornack has come out a couple of times to kind of work with us and get some PD going about inquiry-based learning so we can become better at it as a building. And we also want to decrease level one and two behaviors in our building. And how can we get there? Well, steps, steps of 10, accountability. Um, as I mentioned, we do have the punctual Panthers and that has worked tremendously. We have CHAMPS, which is uh, required for every classroom to participate in. It is basically setting the expectations for the lesson before the lesson begins. And so you have your C for conversation levels. You have your H, how can they get help? Do they ask a friend? Do they raise their hand? Your A is for the activity. Will the activity be an independent activity? Will it be a partner activity? Will it be a group activity? The M is for movement. Can they move freely whenever they want or they do, do they need to ask permission to move about the room? And the P is for participation. How will you participate? And then S, success for all. 
We also have morning meetings, which is a responsive classroom activity. Each class is required to have a morning meeting. It's approximately 8 to 8.20, about 20 minutes a day. And so in my classroom, I have a smart slide up for my kiddos, and it gives them a, a brief rundown of the day, like if we have art or if there's something different in our schedule. And then I give them a fun fact because my kids just thrive on these fun facts. And then um, we do a share activity. Each child is allowed to share but does not have to share. So in the beginning a lot of them don't want to share but as we go through this and they see that everyone else is kind of letting their guard down and sharing, they start to share a little bit. And then we do a team building activity. Um, as I mentioned we do MTSS, our quarterly data meetings, and our inquiry-based learning. And that's how we're working this year at Morris Hill to get to where we need to get. Thanks for listening.